Alright, time to get some personal opinions out. If you've been playing games on any kind of platform for the last decade, then you might have noticed a recurring pattern. That is, difficulty scaling in video games. May it be an action game or an adventure game, or any kind of single player games for that matter. Which, let's be real, most of us enjoy slightly more than playing online with or against other players. I'm going to be real here. I enjoy having a nice relaxing single player experience once in a while where there is no one screaming at me for doing things slightly differently than that guy in a YouTube video. I just want to play games for fun sometimes. Or maybe I just want to enjoy a nice storytelling with good impact. Nowadays, gaming has become mainstream. People of all ages play video games these days. Let it be an 8 year old kid playing Fortnite from the small attic, or maybe a person in their late 50s trying to complete that chapter in that awesome story based game that they've been thinking about all day. In one way or the other, everyone is a gamer nowadays. That's why it is leaning more towards being inclusive rather than focusing on particular type of consumers. Game developers or any kind of publishers have the obligation to publish a game that is targeted towards 70 to 80% of the world population because, let's be honest, more players equals more money. As most of the game that has been released in the past few years have been as a service type where being online is compulsory and being on the particular server is mandatory. So all in all, the more players they have playing on their server, the more microtransactions the publishers can market. Let's talk about all the single player games that have been out for a few years now. Monster Hunter World, Sekiro Shadow Dice Twice, Devil May Cry, Crash Bandicoot, Resident Evil 2, Darksiders, Bloodborne, Dark Souls and so much more. You can easily divide these mentioned games into two categories. One that is targeted towards a casual audience, and one that is targeted towards people who really want to dive into single player experience and have a passion for it. You might be wondering why I'm talking about these things today. The reason? Ghost of Tsushima is releasing in a few days. Or if you're watching this in the future, it's already out. And to be honest, I am a little worried about it. Because, looking at all the previous games that have a genuinely high difficulty cap and a learning curve, Ghost of Tsushima could be one of those games that is not liked by the Western community. Now why do I say Western community? It is simple. A handful of the Western gaming community don't know anything about level scaling in single player games. And let's be honest, most of the game critics don't even know how to play a game. And that handful of people who criticize the game based on its difficulty affects a whole bunch of other groups who want to play the game, but are waiting for a review of it. And evidently, the critic posts a half-baked review, the person who generally wants to play the game watches the review and oh, guess what, minds are changed! Now I might sound a bit harsh on the western gaming community, but I have a reason for that. Take Devil May Cry 3 for example, a Japanese game with Japanese devs. The original developers got back into the game, and Devil May Cry was finally back for the fans after the mediocre second entry. The game was very well received, and looking at this, Capcom had to release the game to the western community as well since the initial release was just for the Asian community. But Capcom applied a different formula to make the game more appealing to the western community. They released a completely different version of the game called DMC3 Dante's Awakening which was a toned down version of the game in terms of difficulty. And even after this, the western community felt the game was too difficult for them. And again, a lot of complaints started flying towards Capcom. After two years of the initial release of DMC3, Capcom released another edition of the game called DMC3 Special Edition, which added another playable character and a gold mode targeted mainly towards the Western community. This mode had the difficulty toned down quite a bit low. Checkpoints were added in the game, enemy AI were much easier and had much more predictable attack patterns, and all this just for the Western community. They could have opted not to do that, but since the majority of the consumers at that time were Western gamers, they had no choice. Want to hear another example? Sekiro, another Japanese game. This was just ridiculous. A long time has passed since the release of Dark Souls franchise, and by this time people already know From Software doesn't mess around when it comes to the difficulty and learning curve of the game. Everyone knows that games produced by From Software will be really tough and will always keep you on your toes. Now fast forward a couple of months, fans of From Software brought the game right away and without a surprise it was loved by the players. Now slowly, it became mainstream. Everyone started playing it, every streamer started streaming gameplay of Sekiro and what did this attract? Casual gamers. People who did not get into Dark Souls because of the RPG element, it looked too dark, it was too difficult to keep up with, there were a lot of things going on in Dark Souls. But those same people as soon as they saw Sekiro being mainstream, they wanted to play it. Why? Even though it was a product of From Software, because the game looked pretty, it didn't have a ton of RPG elements, 
It was easy to get into, stuff like that. Now they got into it, and guess what happens? Tweets flying everywhere, Reddit getting blown up, comments on YouTube saying Sekiro is too hard, torn down the difficulty. From Software got a lot of negative feedback. But to hell with it. They didn't give attention to that feedback because they know how the Western gaming community works. Till this day, people are still asking for an easy mode for Sekiro. And till this day, From Software doesn't care. And I like it. Go play Sudoku on your phone. I can go on and on about this stuff. Like, don't even get me started on Cuphead. Like, how are you a game critic when you can't even beat a simple tutorial of a game? Like, what? What? What are you doing? <sighs> anyway, what I want to talk about is Ghost of Tsushima, another Japanese game about to be released to the Western community. History speaks for itself, and looking at the history of Japanese games that were released to the Western community, and this one is not looking so good. Now I might be wrong, Ghost of Tsushima might do things differently, who knows? Maybe Sucker Punch has it all figured out. This game is about to be released as another PlayStation exclusive title. And I know some of you out there want to know how the game is going to play out. Will it have a high learning curve? Will the combat be difficult? Or as always, is it targeted towards casual audience with all the pretty effects? What I want to know is the replayability. Will people have any incentive to replay the game? Will Sucker Punch implement DDA? If you people don't know what DDA is, it stands for Dynamic Difficulty Adjustment. I am sure you've seen some games implement this. For example, if you're stuck on a certain point of a game, or you can't beat a certain mission because the AI hits hard or is unpredictable, then DDA uses its AI to adjust the difficulty of the game. Be it AI enemies moving in a predictable pattern, not using cover for too long, missing a lot of attacks on you, not blocking your attacks, and so on. DDA also works the other way around. Like say if you're stomping through a game, killing every single enemy or completing every stealth mission or puzzles without any problem. Then DDA kicks in and makes your life a bit more difficult. The AI sensing your presence using smart decision making techniques, sticking in groups and such. Take Crash Bandicoot for example. If you die on a single level, time and time again, DDA kicks in and will turn a random crate into a custom checkpoint to make the game a bit easier. Another example is Resident Evil 4. I know it's a bit old, but I just want to make a point. There's a set piece in the game where you face off against some grunts and two snipers. Now if you die there, the game will recognize your death and the next time you spawn there, there will be no snipers and the number of other enemies are reduced a bit. What I'm saying is, will Ghost of Tsushima make the game inclusive to all categories of players, or will it take a different route and choose to make the game more quantized? If they opt to make the game more quantized, then it'll lead to the game being either mind-numbingly easy or brutally difficult which is the wrong choice in my opinion. What I think they should do is implement DDA in such a way that every group of player or every individual will have different difficulty experiences according to their skill, thereby making the game more inclusive, but in a good way. I know there will be side quests and extra activities in the game. I'm talking about will the game change in any way to challenge players like how Dark Souls and Devil May Cry does. If you complete a game and want to try on a harder difficulty, I'm sure you'll be disappointed if the enemies are still on the same death route as usual, same attack patterns, and just for higher difficulty, they have a ton of health and hit hard, nothing else. That's what I'm worried about. Every single Japanese game has implemented DDA in one form or another. Monster Hunter, Sekiro, Tekken, Metal Gear, just to name a few. And every time they get complaints when devs implement a hard difficulty mode. Let's take Monster Hunter for example. Fans already know what kind of game this is. But MHW is inclusive, meaning it is also targeted towards a casual audience. And as far as I know, as soon as that group got into the game, there were a ton of complaints. The monsters had ton of HP, too many RPG elements, they hit hard, big learning curve, every single encounter takes like half an hour. The devs know this. You don't have to point out the obvious, like come on. They know the game was targeted towards a casual audience as well, but if you don't give a chance to show what the game has to offer, then why are you even playing it at all? If all you want is a relaxing game time alone, then MHW is not your kind of game. The devs don't care because they already got their money. All you can do is fire up Candy Crush on your phone and go to bed. I'm getting a bit sidetracked. To sum up, I really hope Ghost of Tsushima will have some kind of combat depth adding more to its replay value and give players a better incentive to stick with the game for years to come. And that's all. If the game is not good, then it's not good. Nothing we can do. But if the game is good but has no replay value, then that's a no-no from me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. 
And that's it for this video guys, do leave a thumbs up if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon if you don't want to miss out on some more upcoming content. And as always, thanks for watching, this is someone signing out.